All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and talk about graphing linear inequalities from standard form. All right, so first thing you do, you're going to graph it just like it was a regular equation. So if it's in standard form, usually the best way to do it is go ahead and find your, your intercept. So you're going to find your x-intercept, put a 0 for y, y-intercept, put a 0 for x, right? So another way, or other way you could go to think about it is x is c over a, and c over b is the y-intercept. So that's C, that's A, that's B, right? A, B, C. So go ahead and, and figure out what your intercepts are. So 6 over 3 is 2, that's our x-intercept, and 6 over 2 is 3, that's our y-intercept. So you go ahead and plot those, right? There's there's the x, there's the y. It looks like the slope is negative 3 halves, right? We don't really need to know that right now, but there we have it. So now, this is where it's a little different. If it's a linear equation, you just connect those dots, connect those puntos, and you're done. But now, what we got to do is we got to figure out two things. We got to figure out which which kind of line is it? Is it going to be a dotted line? Those come from strict inequalities, or is it going to be a solid line, which is or equal to? Well, here we have an or equal to, so it's a solid line, right? So we plotted our points, figured out what kind of line it's going to be. Right? It's not random. We look at that. It's got the little bar underneath. Solid solid line. If it doesn't, it's a dotted line. Okay, so now we have to figure out is it shaded above or below. Now my personal favorite way to do it is not to use these kinds of things right here. I always forget that and mix it up. It's too complicated for my little tiny brain. So what I usually do is I just pick a number like zero zero and I plug it in and see. If I plug in zero for x and zero for y, I get zero is greater than six, so that's false. So that means that that's not a solution. So the answers aren't going to be on this side of the line. They're going to be on the other side of the line. So it's going to be shaded above. Some people don't like it that way. They like to do like this kind of thing. So let's go ahead and talk about this. Um, the way you shade when it's in standard form is quite a bit more complicated to figure out than it is when it's in um, slope intercept form, unless you just plug in a point. But I'll show you anyway. It's all about the sign of B. The sign of B is key. Absolutely. If B is positive, it's pretty straightforward. If B is positive, then greater is up and less is down. No problem. Here, B is positive. See, it's positive too. So greater is up, so above the line, which we knew was the case anyway because we did the test point. So that means any point over here would be a solution. So like 2 comma, 2 comma 3 would be a solution if we plugged it in. So if we plugged in 2 and then 3, so if we did 3 times 2 plus 2 times 3, we would get something greater than or equal to 6. That is a true thing, which is what we'd expect. Boom, done. Let's talk about the other case. So what I've got here, almost the same exact equation, except now um, we have b is negative. So same thing. We're going to find our intercepts, right? We're going to do 6 over 3, and we're going to do um, 6 over negative 2. So here are our intercepts. So we have that's 2 comma 0 and that is 0 negative 3. So 1, 2, 3, 0 negative 3 and 1, 2. So here we have a positive slope of 3 over 2 because that was negative, right? And we still have a solid line. If that little line wasn't there, if it was a strict inequality, this would be a dotted line. So anyway, plot your points, figure out what kind of line it is. This one's solid. Now. Again, I usually just pick a number, plug it in, like 0, 0. I can plug in 0, 0, and I can see that it's obviously not true. Because 3 times 0 minus 2 times 0, well, that's just 0, and 0 is not more than 6. That's false. So this is false, so it's not shaded, shaded below. But a lot of the time, that's a little, I don't know, again, some people like to do this instead. So here we have b is negative, right? Here we have b is positive. This is the key. b is negative. That's our key. If b is negative and we have a greater sign, it's going to be going down. Negative means opposite. When you solve for b, you would end up dividing both sides by a negative. And if you remember, when you divide by a negative, the inequality symbol turns around. That's why that is the case. So we have greater than, but we have the opposite. So that's going to be down. That's going to be below. So you'd shade below just like this, and you'd be done. Anyway, hope that's helpful. And uh, hope you guys are having a do and doing a great. <laughs> Boy, I do speak English. Hope you guys are doing great.